Um, if he wants some short-term benefit, yeah. I mean, ultimately, he's got a three-year contract. They're offering him more money in the short term. Um, and, you know, if he wants that to be the driving force behind his decision-making process, there's nothing to be lost from it. I imagine there's a quid pro quo in there that West Ham will want to put some substantive, substantial release clause in there that uh, protects their position um, in, the, in the event that uh, someone wants to come in and buy the player, that they have to meet a release clause. Of course, if the release clause isn't met, the player can still agitate if he's not happy and cause problems which no one would, would advocate or want to advocate. Um, I, look, I think the best the, the, the best thing for the player to do is to do what he thinks is right for him. Mm. He's got three years left on a contract. If West Ham are worried enough at this moment in time that they feel they need to protect themselves with three years to go, what can be the disadvantage of signing a contract that has a release clause in it that does precisely what Harry Kane's contract didn't do that would perhaps have just, you know, reduced the argument and distilled it to its lowest common part, which is, is someone going to meet the release clause or not? I mean... As happened with Grealish. I mean, I, the, th the thing for me is I, I struggle with evaluation. I think Declan Rice is a very good player. But I struggle with the perception he's a £100 million footballer. Well, I don't think he thinks he's a £100 million No, footballer. but his manager thinks he is. And his club think he is. And, and that's the right way to position yourself because if you think they are and someone's fool enough to come and bid that money for them, then you'd sell them. Because believe me, believe me, if West Ham got bid 100 million quid, all the protestations to one side, all the GSB out stuff, he'd still be going mm. if they got bid 100 million quid for him. But the fact is, is that West Ham are positioning themselves with a vantage point and a value of a player that probably deters people because I think most people don't think he's a 100 million pound player. Well, I think one thing's for sure. That Declan Rice is going to go on to be a terrific player wherever he moves to at whenever, whatever point and earn lots and lots of money. Absolutely. Now, knowing him a little bit, I don't think he's motivated by money at all. I mean, I think he wants to be the best he can be. He's a young lad who's done terrifically well at West Ham. He's the captain. Last time I spoke to him, saw him at the golf club, he was really enthusiastic about the new season. He was looking forward to leading out his team because obviously when Noble doesn't play his captain, leading out the team in Europe. He knows he's still learning, his, uh, learning the trade. He was more than looking forward to the season when I spoke to him. Um, this isn't a lad who's desperately trying to get out the door before West Ham fans think that, because that's not the narrative here. He will want to play at a higher level because, unfortunately, the, the reality is West Ham aren't going to compete for top honours any time in our lifetime, probably. Mm. So he will move. It's just when and where to. And the value, you know, I, I, I would be saying to him personally right now, if you've got three years left, don't sign. Because what you don't want... Next summer, he's got two years left and yeah. West Ham are in a precarious position. That's the point, yeah. And he will get his move then next summer. And I, if, I was, if I was advising him, although I very rarely advise anybody who's ever asked me in my life not to sign a contract for lots of reasons, on this occasion, with his talent, with his age and with the predicament he's in or the way football is at the moment, what you don't want him to be doing... You don't want to put West Ham in a, in a position where they can you know, hold you... Mm. against your will why, why and have a ridiculous release clause in there that no one's going to meet which why, is... why are you so certain they will get his move next summer why am I certain yeah because... he's got three years left plus a year's option well because if he's got two years left generally that's when you're looking at well, who takes the option what's the option based upon is it the club's the trigger or is it is it, is it, is it is a, a a mutual agreement well let, the let's forget through? the option even yeah the club it? can trigger it so then by what based on what well, let's, 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 let's go down Jim, Jim's uh, position can, and say I, I, that yeah. he can trigger it. Then, then ultimately, then he's not guaranteed to get a move next year. So wouldn't he be in a better position to back himself by saying, OK, I'll enter into a new contract, and I understand that the reason why you want to put in a new contract is because you actually want to protect yourselves. You're not doing it for my benefit. Mm. Right? So in exchange for that, to protect your economic position and the value you can have around me, I will sign a new contract, take all mm. the benefits of it in the short term. Yeah. But there has to be an agreed formula of, of release, release clause, clause, which yeah. is realistic. Yes. Realistic yeah. for you as a club yeah. and realistic for me as an individual. Well, there's and two it's significant two... at the moment that there, there are no bidders. Well, that's... The, yeah, but Jim... There are, there are no bidders at this time. There would be... Mm. Depending on the price, there would be takers for Declan. The problem is when you depending look Depending on the price, yeah. Yeah, yeah like any player. But yeah. don't worry about that. There are clubs who will... Who De Declan won't be short on... Off so they can't work then, Danny, can it? Because what? if there's no bidders for him and no one values him at 100 million quid and West Ham do and they're going to want to put 
that kind of clause into his contract, then you're, you're a Mexican standoff because on one side of the argument you've got West Ham saying we need to protect our economic interests and hold your value in a marketplace that may yet even inflate. Right? On the other side of the argument, we're suggesting that no-one's going to pay that release clause and the player's going to take short-term gain for a longer-term longer, longer term leveraging. So in come West Ham say, here you go, five years now, we want you, we want you to 2026. OK, he goes, OK, fine, you've got me till 2024. But I'm going to sign for 2026. I'm going to get another 50 grand a week or whatever it's mm. going to be. And you're going to get a release clause in your contract, which protects us. It's not too unrealistic. But no one wants to pay that. So then he's stuck. Mm. And West Ham are the winners of the conversation. Well, yeah, yeah look, the, the one thing... And no thing, one's going to be silly enough the, unless, of course, he's represented by Charlie Kane. The one thing you're... <laughs> well, the one thing we're guessing about here is this extra year, which is crucial in this whole conversation. Yeah. Because if he gets to next summer and there's two years left, he is in a great position and West Ham will sell for less than 100. Right, I'm, I I can't see that not happening. And, but and, who, and, who and let, is? But where are the buyers standing? Hold on, let, let's just. Even if it was a hundred, because there isn't a clause at the moment. Even if it wasn't a, even, uh, even if it was a bit less or whatever fee, there are clubs who don't care about the fee, which we've seen. And they want they, the player if they need that player. Yeah. Now, do United need a holding midfielder of Declan Rice's quality? Yes. Would they pay eight hundred million for him next summer when they don't have to prioritise her because they went for Sancho and Varane? Yeah, they probably would. Mm. So. I mean, that's assuming we're moving the bar now. Everything's suddenly changing from, from the narrative being that you mustn't get to the last year. Now you mustn't get to the last two years. No, it's What's always it been two. But hang on, it for really good, hasn't, It has actually. for good players. No, in an ideal world, sure, but for not the players. real panic stations start to get when you're getting towards, say, 18 months out and you haven't done a deal by the January of that following season when you're into your second yeah. year. But we're now moving... It'll soon be... Because players will have you convinced it because it's, it's them that's getting the benefit of it. Or you need to be negotiating with three years out. You know, well, if you negotiate with an idiot, two years generally is the, well, there's been, always the, the, been the, the game's way for full top of idiots, players. So there's a lot of opportunity for that. Are West Ham going about this in the way that you would go about it, They're Simon? trying to protect their because asset. Because yeah, he's got three years left plus a year's option. When did they give him his original the, contract? The, the offer, there are two offers on the table I'm at the moment. I'm not sure that they've got three years left and one option. And I don't think they have either. The I, the, I doubt the, that. The, the, the second offer that would more than much. double his present wage and would make him the highest paid that player in the history yeah, of West Ham. Yeah, that's all background Ham. noise because if he gets a move for someone else for 100 million quid, he's going to go out there and get the same money as Jack Grealish. He's going to yeah. get 250,000 pounds a week and dwarf whatever West Ham are going to get. So it's long term, long term gain over short term benefit. I'd be very surprised if he had um, an extra year. But in why the end. did City go for it at 100 million with Grealish and no one's going for it? At 100 million for Declan. Because nobody thinks Declan Rice is worth 100 million quid. And f for some reason or another, Man City think Jack Grealish is. Beauty's yeah. in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? Of course it is. And this particular situation, Michael Carrick was probably worth a damn sight more money than lots of people put credit down to what to, to him. And I tried to sign him at Paris and got a deal agreed, unbelievably, at three and a half million quid from West Ham. Yeah. You look at Carrick now and say, even in today's market, you probably wouldn't give him the value that he really has. Certain players don't, because of their positions, don't quite get the value that they should do. Declan and, and, over the next decade will be if you put if you Man United paid hundred million pounds for him that would be hundred million well well spent. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll, we'll see about that, Danny. I mean, I you know, I, I when I watched him in the Euros, yeah, he's a good player. Simon, I'm but not he saying that I, great. I'm not saying I. And he got we got ripped a new one last week by Newcastle. I not in the second half. I oh, okay, I didn't. He had a kick did. up the backside, and second half he was good as gold. But but the point I'm making is, I've never said any players worth hundred million. I'm not. I'm not arguing with that. But in the market, when people are going, if Jack Greaves going for 100 million, then Declan can go for 100 million. They're different players. Okay. Yeah. But if you're looking at, if you're looking next decade at Man United for a holding midfielder who can do that job properly, it doesn't have to be. He has to be better than what they've got, by the way. It doesn't have to be Brian Robson. Why, why are you indexing him to Manchester United? Well, because it's just because they have the greater need for a holding midfield player than any of the rest of them. At the moment, I would suggest well, Man City so. might have one because for being Fernand yeah. for, 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 Fernandinho. For, for, Fernandinho so. All right, let's say City as well. So both of them, if they prioritise that area of the pitch, although it might seem too much for him, hundred million. Look, Naby Keita, Liverpool pay seventy million for. Mm -hmm. He wasn't worth that. No, absolutely, and he hasn't done the job. But we can we can and analyse him. And man. Fred, Man United have paid fifty odd million for, and he certainly isn't. And, and Liverpool paid seventy for Van Dijk. Mm. So you got Van Dijk and Keita for the same amount. Come on, it doesn't mm. it's just it's just a market where it is in that moment. Okay, you know? well let's see what Declan does tonight. Jim White. And Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.